Hey guys, my name is Ismos, and today we are looking at yet another tool that you should be adding to your workflow, and that is Instant Meshes. And basically, what this tool does, it automatically retopologizes your meshes into a usable low polygon mesh. So, if you don't know what retopology is, when you sculpt a character or a mesh in Blender or ZBrush or any sculpting tool, you get a very dense high poly mesh that is unusable in game engines or inefficient to use in normal pipelines where you're going to render using offline render engines like Cycles or Redshift. So, either you have to do it manually by remodeling the mesh from scratch step by step using vertex manipulation and using the base model that you have sculpted as a guideline or you can use something like the remesh tool that is inbuilt in blender or to retopologize uh, the entire thing for you but the problem with that tool like the remesh tool in blender you don't really get uh, the precise control how the edges are going to flow uh, like you have with instant mesh we're going to dive in into instant mesh and just to show you how uh, the workflow changes or differs from blender giving you more control on the overall look of your topology you need this especially if you're going to use the models for animation because modeling or sculpting for animation requires a different type of edge loops or edge flow other than any type of modeling so any tool that gives you control over how your final topology is going to be very useful for you especially to get the contours where they have to be when animating especially around joints and areas on your mesh that are going to be folding you want to have a specific kind of edge flow around those sets so let's look at how you can get this tool and uh, see how it works. So, so I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can download the tool and uh, you will be getting it at, on from github.com uh, slash Jacob uh, stroke instant meshes. Uh, again, the link is going to be in the description. You can just scroll down until you find uh, the Windows version and download that. But uh, in this screenshot, you can see the different stages of uh, what you what you're doing. I have uh, the algorithm uh, trying to estimate uh, the topology here. At this stage, this is where you do some tweaking to change the topology, an option that the remesh tool in Bender doesn't give you. I click on that to download the Windows version or Mac if you have Mac. Or you can also download this data set, which is just uh, a number of different uh, models that you can play around with uh, to see how uh, this works if you don't have any dense uh, models. But we're also going to do a test comparison between uh, this instant mesh tool versus is the blender remesh built-in tool uh, just to see a comparison of what you do so this data set is going to be very helpful in that if you want to test out the tool the data set is just a pack of different models don't worry about uh, the language they're using here it's just uh, different models and if you're not convinced uh, by how legit this tool is you can see that uh, it's also being used by model a very popular uh, 3d application uh, to remesh at their own meshes so you can also just go in there and read about that to see how powerful and how amazing this tool is because it's also being used by industry leaders in the industry so yeah, so let's dive in into the instant mesh and uh, see how it works so, so when you download instant meshes it will just come as a zip file that you can extract uh, anywhere in your folder and uh, then you should have it you should have it in an instant mesh folder like this and when you open that there is no installation it just opens uh, directly and uh, the great thing about this instant mesh tool you can also use it directly uh, through the command line prompt and uh, if you have more than a few meshes you want to do automatically you can all the steps you want here in the command line so that you can take over the entire process for a number of meshes if you download this data set uh, which is again uh, just a number of uh, models uh, you will get again uh, so let's uh, choose something here let's uh, go with this here just to show you the different workflow we can try out different uh, meshes here and uh, see how that goes uh, so i'll just open up instant meshes then open mesh and uh, it will take you to the instant mesh folder and uh, let's see let's try this and uh, so the first thing you want to do is uh, first choose how you want to remesh this. You can either use only quads and then for the configuration settings, you can just go with the default settings or just choose to uh, maintain a uh, sharp creases. Uh, just click OK because this is this one is just to reload the mesh into your into your scene. Uh, then you can choose how the final polygon count you want to end up with and I can use this slider here. The higher the polygon count, the more details you're going to retain, but uh, the more polygon count, of course, you're going to have as well now all you have to do is hit this resolve button and it will give you an estimation of how the are uh, the polygons or the edge loops are going to flow so you can see from the from the orientation of these lines how these polygons are going to flow uh, if you look at uh, some areas here for example under her eye here uh, we don't like uh, these edge loops to just flow uh, straight like that so uh, this is where this tool differs from the blender remesh tool and you can just you have this control uh, tools uh, that you can select and uh, draw lines 
or contours are just to determine how those edge loops should flow. So I know for a fact that uh, these edge loops around the eye should have that uh, rounded edge loop. Uh, so I can choose to draw round circles like that and that should give me, uh, that should recalculate the algorithm or the remesh or the retopology to change how those edge flows are going to go. So you can also just uh, go to Google and uh, search for face uh, uh, human face topology just to look at how those edge loops I should flow uh, for reference and uh, then you can just uh, uh, copy or try to get an estimation of uh, that edge loop so I can see that uh, uh, this we have a ring here around half face so uh, the edge loops the control the controls for this tool is that uh, uh, you have to switch off these these tools while navigating so just drag by left clicking uh, to, drag, to pan around or to orbit around your character and if you hold down shift while dragging uh, that will move uh, the uh, 3d workspace like that so i want to follow this edge loop here edge loop flow here so i can again come back to this and uh, draw another circle like that and that uh, you will get a uh, some uh, some good results around that and that uh, you can also try to get uh, this final edge loop uh, that goes around like that it may not get it exactly but it's with, at least it will try to get you uh, something closer to that which is not an option you will get in blender now let's uh, again you have to first disable this uh, to be able to navigate you can also just do that and uh, draw something like that and again something like that something like that and uh, now we have this try these are uh, edges here so again I want them to be straight as this I can just draw it another straight line like that and uh, that should uh, give me that ring uh, that I was going for uh, like that that maybe you can even add in an extra edge loop there uh, to get uh, that there and uh, for the mouth so just go back around here you can see we have another ring yet another ring here so again just how to draw something like that and uh, again we want to maintain uh, the edge loop here also that uh, then for her smile we can do something like that like that uh, after you do that after you're happy with that uh, with that again there are still a lot of areas we can tweak so for example I want uh, the edge flow here to follow the kind the the hairline so I can do exactly that and I would get that and I can have that there so you see how around the ear you can also you can also do something like that and I know that uh, these first lines should go in that direction uh, other areas I think I look just fine Yeah, the other areas look okay and then after you do that you have to solve uh, for the uh, for the codes so let's just do that and uh, you can see how this is a good estimation of uh, what we're getting here and that uh, is a great way to start you can also come back here uh, to reposition the the field so or, or just do the same thing uh, with uh, these tools here to continue getting a good estimation of uh, what you're doing so uh, I think we can also add more just again you have to turn on these brushes as you pan around you can see this is uh, the level of control you don't get with uh, other retopology tool so I can see I don't want these triangles to be there so I can just uh, those are uh, uh, to be like that so I can also just follow the contours of this uh, of this ear to get a better so you can be as detailed as you want to get better results and for example let me just navigate uh, just move back here to the hairline and uh, just draw in all those contours directly to see how how this would differ see where else can we add more detail yeah, again uh, these edge loops here I want them to flow in the direction of the hair so you can see 
that is amazing and uh, say, okay, uh, when you make a mistake like that, you have these X's that uh, you can just remove. I think I'm good with this and uh, the more detail, uh, the more time you spend on this, uh, the more uh, detailed uh, your, the better the results are going to be. Let's go with that and uh, then just export the mesh. So we have to first extract the mesh and you can see how this is a, has created uh, the topology. You can see the different edge loops we have created uh, that uh, nearly match uh, this. Uh, so then after that, you just have to save this. Uh, it's going to save an OBJ file. So I'm just going to just have it on my desktop so that it's easy for me to find. So when saving, when saving, you have to add, uh, say you're saving this as www, you have to add the extension OBJ otherwise it won't it will give you an error so just make sure you save you, you add the extension otherwise you get the error and then you can go under file import obj uh, desktop import now you can see uh, the retopologized version we have here so if we compare this with the blender uh, retopology tools so if i go to when you reduce other uh, polygon count, you're also going to lose uh, uh, the level of detail you're getting uh, with this. So, so now if we try using the remesh tool, uh, the remesh modifier here, you can see uh, the difference. And uh, remember, you don't really have a way to control uh, how the Edge flow flows. And, uh, you can see this is a dense. Uh, this is a denser mesh, but uh, with uh, lesser details. Let me maybe shade smooth. Uh, if you, there's also another remesh tool and uh, object data. So if you use that, yeah, we can. I don't remember the final uh, number of faces I used, uh, but let's first go with the default and see. You may get. You see uh, the kind of results you're getting here. You don't really get uh, the edge loops, uh, the, all the control, the precision, uh, the edge loop control uh, that you get uh, with this version here. So that's the biggest difference here. You can see how these edge loops are angled. Uh, you don't really want this uh, for anything, especially if you're going to do animation and uh, basically slapping a grid onto the mesh. Yeah, so. That's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Again, a link will be added. All the links are going to be added in the description for you to get this.